up next is Ravi. Ravi is the field CTO at Shippa. Um, he's, it's a cloud native application as a code platform. And prior to Shippa, Ravi was an evangelism leader, chief architect at Harness. Ravi has held various sales and engineering roles at AppDynamics, Mesosphere, where I knew him, Red Hat and IBM, helping commercial and federal clients build the next generation of distributed systems. Ravi is obsessed with Korean barbecue. Me too. And we'll travel for food. Welcome, Ravi. It's good to see you again. Well, hey, everybody. I'm Ravi Lockman, and thank you so much for coming to my Argo Con talk. Supercharging your developer experience with three particular tools. There are Argo CD, Crossbane, and ShipUp. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry. You're in the right spot. So a little bit about myself. I'm Robin Lockman. I'm the field CTO at ShipUp. Consistently, I've been breaking things. i never gotten something right the first time. Thus, I need to have a lot of iteration, and I'm, I'm iteration's best friend. And also, why do uh, sprint planning t-shirts sizes end at XL? You know, there's things that are bigger <laughs> than XL hard drive. They're like, why is there not a 3XL t-shirt size? But another talk for another day. Uh, previously in my career, I've worked at a few different firms. I've worked at Harness, uh, most recently, the chief architect at Mezzas for Red Hat, Lloyd and a couple other places, and really excited to be talking to you today. So what are we going to be talking about today? What is this DX developer experience, right? And so a little bit of different flavor of a talk today at ArgoCon, and then marching towards something called another concept called application as code, or AAC. And then just taking a look at the art of the possible. I know this is a kind of short, shortened a bridge talk, so we'll just be kind of speaking towards uh, the, the integration between Argo CD, Crossplane, and ShipUp. So developer experience, what on earth is that? So kind of reading a textbook definition, you know, saving you from this definition here is that basically it's your experience and overall interaction of feelings that you as an engineer have, or if you're a platform engineering leader or platform engineer that your internal customers have, right? So it's basically like user experience. And so it's like user experience, but the primary consumer is a software engineer. And a lot of times it's like, oh, can software engineers just figure it out? But a big hurdle to software engineering is actually poor developer experience. Imagine you change teams, you have to learn new tools again, uh, and that can be fairly, fairly challenging. And so it's really focusing on the interactions of the products and systems that you develop and also the perceptions of the utility and each of use of this particular product. For example, uh, a CD platform like Argo CD. <laughs> How easy is it <laughs> for your development team to use, right? So that's, uh, you know, maybe barking at the wrong tree for the wrong talk. So uh, for, from a usability standpoint, th this is what a really, really core thing. Imagine you just change teams to a, a new team. And so usability really focuses on how easy is it for someone, especially someone unfamiliar with your system or even a first time user to accomplish your goals, right? Like we all know things that have good usability, things that have bad usability, and often not from a software engineering perspective, you know, this going back to this adage that, hey, you know, let the developers just figure it out. It, it's really producing a lot of toil, right? Like as we're dealing in more of a product mindset now, so instead of just having, integrating several scripts, you know, there's, there's platforms out there to really help help with that. And also making sure that the interactions with those platforms are fairly smooth and toil-free. Findability. Uh, again, going back to, can someone without inter without a sentence uh, find the functionality that they're looking for, right? So, you know, findability can be in the product, it can be documentation, uh, it can be some something called a natural affordance, right? You know, you, you push a flat panel, you pull a door handle, uh, those type of UX type of experiences, and making sure that, a, again, a first time or even experienced user can have the ability to find the functionality that they need or able to, let's say, expose or even integrate particular functionality that they need. You know, there's a lots, lots of layers there. And then credibility, right? So someone has to trust your software, trust your solution to use it. If it's something that's very buggy, or in this example, something that's very virus laden, right? You know, would you rather use LimeWire or Spotify to get your music? I think most people would go with Spotify, you know, today in 2021. Uh, but is is your platform uh, robust? Is your platform, uh, is, is it uh, there when someone needs to use it? You know, if your bill system is always down or clogged or log queue or things are taking forever, like your, your credibility could be... Uh, De de detrimented. And the same thing is for the consumer side, right? So these particular, you know, usability, findability, credibility, three core pillars of developer experience, uh, those are there outside of, of the uh, particular enterprise software world. So, and this is what it's all about, right? So like these particular door metrics, if you haven't heard of them before, so deployment frequency, time to restore, lead time to change, change failure rate, 
having good developer experience will help move the needle on these things. So potentially, you know, you're able to deploy more frequently. Uh, you have less, especially less lead time is the big one, right? Like if you're able to iterate more and if people are able to interact with your platform more, the lead time is less. And again, if you're able to, you know, produce uh, more work or have more iteration at the time that you're going into production, you know, your change failure rate should be reduced. So application as code, right? So Another concept here I want to introduce, and so kind of kind of leaning back into you know if you take a look at your teams that you're on, maybe you're on a DevOps team or a Dev team, and yet there's different expectations, right? Looking from left to right, a developer might have an expectation of a DevOps team to you know they're evolving infrastructure fast, you know, they're making very sufficient policies and making you know self service to a point easy. And then from a you know the DevOps standpoint, looking at a developer, like hey you know they should be deploying their applications fast. We have a great management portal for them. And they should be able to do things themselves versus what actually ends up happening, right? So the developers might be like, oh, the DevOps team made overly complex pipelines for us and overly complex security rules, postures to go through. And you know that we need them to support us being a developer versus uh, you know, the, the DevOps looking at the developer team like, oh my goodness gracious, like they have a dependency on us. Like now how do we produce all these connective tissue that we don't need and so on and so on and so on, right? And so complexity leads to burden. And one of the things we want to talk about today is something called AAC, right? Application as code. And so uh, this is a concept that SHIP has been pushing for a while is that you know, typically in an application, there are certain things that just all up, transcends all applications, right? So clearly you have to have rules. Uh, also, what is an application, right? So uh, as, a, as a developer, you know, I clearly know that traffic comes in and traffic goes out of my application. Uh, I don't need to be dealing with very granular Istio rules or service mesh rules, et cetera, et cetera, to be producing that particular functionality. And even infrastructure, right? You know, a lot of times deploying to a certain infrastructure as a software engineer, it's an implementation detail. Like it doesn't quite matter to me where you're placing something, even to a point, you know, it doesn't matter to me you're going Kubernetes, right? Like it shouldn't have to matter. And having a standard def definition of your application, similar to a standard definition of infrastructure like IAC, is something that we've been pushing pretty heavily at Shippa. And so kind of talking about Argo, Crossplane, and Shippa. So what are these three particular tools that we have here? So Argo CD, clearly I used to make too many jokes about Argo being a T, but you know, at ArgoCon, hopefully yeah, you already know uh, what Argo is. So I'll kind of skip over what Argo is here. Uh, so Crossplane. So one of the newer tools that I actually found out about not too long ago and something I'm very excited about is something called Crossplane. So Crossplane, is a Kubernetes infrastructure as code provider. So what does that mean? Uh, Crossplane is a, how this boils into IEC is that Crossplane is a ubiquitous control plane, right? And so with Crossplane, you have the ability to manage items that are not particularly made for Kubernetes. So for example, if you want to kind of monitor a job or uh, you want to be able to do operations, um, it's the ability to manage that in Kubernetes centric ways. So if you have kubectl, you can apply a cross-plane resource, and then th that would be the ability uh, to manage uh, resources with Kubernetes. And then there's Shippa. <laughs> we are an infrastructure as code provider, pardon me, application as code provider. And so tying all those three things together, uh, basically I'll give you a very short version because I know we're coming up on time, is that uh, with cross-plane, um, we're able to front Shippa configurations in Crossplane, right? So for example, if you want to add a cluster or you want to bind a cluster to the Shippa platform, uh, you're able to do that with a Crossplane YAML, right? So this is a definition that is an abstraction to the Shippa platform, which is another abstraction. Uh, and you're able to execute that in something like Argo. Now we have a more lengthy example, uh, you know, given the time constraints here uh, at, at the conference that, i uh, love to show you it basically at a, a TLDR, a cheat level here is that pointing Argo to the cross plane manifest that represent a ship of manifest that so your abstraction has an abstraction, but at the end of the day, the developers will be dealing with a ship of AAC abstraction that's fronted by a cross plane, which is able to have all the GitOps goodness. For example, it's RBAC access, uh, reporting, the simple definitions about ingress, egress, security scanning, whatnot, um, and managed with the GitOps goodness Argo. But with that, you know, I do, I know we're a little bit on time here, so can I kind of conclude my talk? Uh, really excited to be connecting with everybody. You know, we, we can give you a, a deeper dive demo. We actually have it up on YouTube, uh, us uh, pulling all those three things together. But uh, hey, Shippa.io, hit me up on Twitter at Robbie Locke. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. I'm looking forward to connecting with everybody at the conference.